You know, here's the thing. I can't even think about being exhausted. I've got so much to do. Today's day three. We got day four and day five coming up. So I can't even consider exhaustion as an option. All right, you, ready? you ready? I'm ready. So we're ready to go live to everywhere else in the world, everybody. Hang on. Three, two, one. Hey, hey, everybody, welcome on into day three. We've made it to day three of Clay Share Con. Wow, the last two days have been amazing. We did a lot of surface decoration. We did a lot of hand building. Uh, today, we are gonna focus on wheel throwing, trimming, uh, a little, little bit of glazing, a little bit of cleaning up your bottoms because we have a smooth bottom tutorial. You can see the whole schedule of events on claysharecon.com. So if you wanna see when something's happening, you can see that then. You also can see all of the sponsors, promos, discounts, deals, and the prizes that they're doing for the giveaways, which we do every day. Uh, I think, Kev, is today our biggest giveaway day? Uh, I think so, uh -huh. 24 today. 24 prizes today. So we did 18 yesterday, 18 the day before, and 24 today. Um, there's a lot of happy people. <laughs> and there's gonna be a lot more because we got today and two more days after this. And then tonight, don't forget, it's the Clayscapes After Party hosted by Clayscapes Pottery. That'll be coming live from their location. We're gonna start that off at 6 p.m. Eastern time. Now, at the beginning, I'm gonna teach you all how to make a Jess Teeny, my version of a Cosmo. So we'll start with that and then I'll throw it over to Drew and he'll take over from there. And I promise you will love it. There's something happening that involves a lot of flash and fire. Some of you might know what, you know, I'm talking about, but we didn't announce it. We kept it secret, so it's a surprise. Fiery, but I won't say. I'm just giving you lots of hints. So this morning we're gonna make textured tumblers. I'm gonna throw a couple tumblers. I've got a few here off to the side that I have already thrown. I made a few different shapes. This one right here is a fun one. Uh, this is a pretty simple, simple shape. So we're gonna be texturing these in a bit after I throw a couple forms. Good morning, hi. Hey, hey everyone, oh, I see everybody's coming in. Good morning, hi. Just got through ordering items with the discount codes I know. I save up for this because this is the chance to buy all the things I've bought. I bought some spherical molds, I bought these cool cones, I bought some leaf textures, I bought a new Shim, uh, Shimpo Nidec hand extruder. Um, I've been shopping too. So here is a finished textured. It's technically a mug because a tumbler is just one step away from a mug. All you have to do is put a handle on a tumbler. So this is a textured piece. And I'm sorry, I'm so far away from the camera. I can't get closer, the wheel's in the way. And this is basically what we're gonna do is show you how to add this texture to a wheel thrown form. Now, these, these techniques I'm teaching you, I mean, if this was a slab piece, you would have added the texture first, but what if you made something and forgot to add your texture? Well, you could, you could still add it later if you wanted to. So we're gonna do this. We're gonna be using a bunch of stamps. I have got some of Sharon Hoppy design stamps and some of my own stamps, my little cute deer stamps and my succulent stamps available at Sharon Hoppy Designs. I've got a few Sanbao Studios, which is China Clay Art stamps. Uh, they make a lot of really great designs. They're some of my favorite designs. I've got a drawer full of MKM stamps and rollers. We'll be using them. And then I've got a couple from Debbie De La Cruz from De La Designs. And I've got my chicken one I haven't tried out yet. So I think we're gonna have to put a chicken on something. And then we got little flower and fern. So <laughs> I see, what was that? Uh, Lisa said, welcome to our addiction, I know. Um, it's the thing about pottery, you don't need a lot of stuff, but there's a lot of cool stuff out there. So let's, let's t go back to, and I think we'll probably flip it over to the overhead camera. This is the tray I made yesterday in the hand building a tray with Sambao under glaze transfers. And everybody's always asking, how long do you let them set? Well, I made the tray yesterday and it's been sitting covered lightly with plastic since then. So now I'm gonna flip it over. I just wanna clean up my back edge here. I have it upside down. This is the best time to do it. Sometimes I'll even put my underglaze, a little black speedball underglaze in here, and then that will be ready for me to do my signature. Let me just smooth this all out. And I've got a board, so we're just gonna flip it over, line it up on the board. 
lip. And then, sit this down. We take the big board off. We don't need that anymore. We'll put that off to the side. And then we remove the GR pottery form. No, look at this. This is what I want to show you. Look, none of the transfer came off on the board. The board's a little damp. It'll dry. Just sit it like this to dry. There's a little blue tinting here on the corners. Uh, you know, just wipe it clean right now and then sit it to dry. It only takes like half hour or so to dry. And then you're ready to use it again. So that's how I make the tray. And look, here's our beautiful tray. Now, these trays sometimes try to warp on me, so I will use these things called weight bags. Let me just grab a couple. Here's one. It's a little kitty litter in a old t-shirt, and I just pile them all up. I'll cover this whole thing with weight bags, and then it'll just sit. So there it is. There's the, uh, there's the tray. I'll bring it close. You want to do the front camera? I'll bring it up. Y'all can see it. So look at that beautiful design. This is from Sambao Studios which their website is chinaclayart.com. They are doing a special right now. Check out the promo deal. But look at edge to edge. And I probably will do a blue line with Speedball Royal Blue all the way around that edge. But um, let me grab a few weight bags here. So see how I have all these weight bags? I weigh, I'm going to weigh the whole thing down like this until it's bone dry. So that's how that's going to go. Let me just sit this down so it doesn't... Actually, I'm going to weigh it down because my studio is really hot, so stuff's going to dry crazy fast. And then I'll, I'll pick it back up and I'll show you how I weigh it. So you get to see that exact thing. And you're going to be like, whoa, look. Look, I wasn't kidding. Look, at these are all old t-shirts, like the arms of a shirt or the middle of a shirt. And I weigh it down like this until it's completely dry. So that's how I do that. Didn't know you were going to get that today, did you? Okay, now let's throw. <laughs> I did that. Now we're going to throw. All right, so we're making tumblers. Um, tumblers, I use about the same amount of clay as a mug, but sometimes a little less. Depends on the size tumbler I want to make. If I'm making um, a big, like, iced tea glass, I'll go with, like, a pound and a quarter. If I'm making a little short, just juice glass or regular everyday drinking glass, I'll go with about a pound of clay. I have about a pound, 1.2. So this is a pound and um, two ounces, about. So almost a pound and a quarter of clay that I have here. And I think we'll probably be switching over, make sure that focus is good on the other camera. Let me turn my wheel on. The bat I'm using is from Studio Pro Bats. It focus over here. How's that now? So this bat system I'm using is called the Space Saver bat system from Studio Pro Bats. It has these great inserts, which I love for throwing small things and lifting them out. And then you put it back in because you want it centered again so we can add our texture. Use old socks for weight bags. Yes, me too, if I have any. <laughs> I don't always have them, you know. So this is clay I've wedged already. And we're just going to slam it down in the middle. Now, if you want to learn how to throw, I have a free intro to wheel throwing on clayshare.com. So you can check that out. In that class, we talk a bit about, a clay, about clays, and I show you how to wedge and everything. So I threw it into the center, and then I smack it a bit, just using the palms of my hands, smacking it in. So that seats the clay well on the bat or the wheel head, whatever you're throwing with, and um, kind of gets it approximately on center. You love the space saver. I do too. Um, and we're giving away some Studio Pro Bats uh, today, but I don't think it's the space saver. I think it's their um, other bats that I have to throw with later. All right, so I'm going to cone up. So this is called centering. So we're coning up. See how it kind of looks like a cone? And then we're going to compress it back down. And one of the tricks when you're first starting to throw Make sure your clay is soft enough. If you're starting out and you're throwing with a very like stiff, dry clay, you're going to fight the clay. So, so do, so do a, uh, a nice, smooth clay, something soft. It could be a groggy clay if you like grog, but 
Throwing with groggy clay is like throwing with kitty litter. I don't really love it, but I do love groggy clay. So it's a, the struggle's real. <laughs> the chicken stamp I know, isn't that a great one? So we're gonna get this centered into a little cake. If you're just starting and you have difficulty centering and you're getting really frustrated because you haven't made anything, I always tell my students, make something even though it's going to be wobbly and wonky just do something so you have that that sense of accomplishment all right have the clay centered now we're going to go ahead and find the center with our thumb and i'm just going to press down with my middle finger till i'm about a quarter of an inch from the bottom now if you don't know how to to, to gauge want to know how to gauge how deep it is take a needle tool get it wet and stab it in and you'll see, let me see, right to there. I don't know if the camera's picking that up because that's a tiny little thing, but right to there is how thick my bottom is, which is what I want. I don't do this when I am throwing anymore. I just know from, you will get to the point with practice, you don't need to do that then just filling it back in. So I'm just compressing the clay and filling those holes I just made back in because you, you don't want to leave them there. All right, so now we're gonna open up the bottom. So I'm just gonna pull out. Then I'm gonna compress it again. Now, mugs, cups, cylinder forms, vases, they usually have a flat bottom. And we have a 90 degree angle bowls, which we're going to do a little later, have a, a beautiful curve, but you can make a bowl that, that's a flat bottom. I've done it. Planters, I often do flat bottom. Thanks for sharing that. And you can get your Studio Pro Bats directly from Studio Pro Bat, or you can get them from Clayscapes Pottery. So I'm just pulling up. I do use a sponge when I pull. I like how it spreads the pressure across the surface better than my fingers. Your fingers tend to poke in more. And then with the sponge, I have this wider surface here touching the clay instead of just fingers touching the clay. Compress the rim. What make is my wheel? So Karen, this is a Bailey Pottery Pro XL, and I've had this wheel for 17 years. It is a really fabulous wheel. It has a one-piece enclosed splash pan, has a drain hole here in the front so that I can just scooch everything down there, has a panel here off to the side that lifts out so if I have a ton of trimmings, I can scooch them out. The um, space here, if you need to throw bigger things, you get this little adapter that raises everything up and it puts you up higher. So it's not really a problem as far as if you're gonna throw something bigger than this space here. Cause that would be the only concern I would ever have if I was making a really wide piece. But I've never had a problem with it. And I love this. I loved it so much I bought a second one cause I have two wheels. Uh, when I was teaching, I needed two wheels in the studio so I could teach my students. And now that I don't teach in the studio anymore, well, I teach you all online, but I don't teach in person classes. Uh, after I stopped doing that, my other wheel became my dark clay wheel. This is my light clay wheel because anybody who's ever thrown <laughs> dark clay and then you want to do porcelain or light clay, cleaning it every time, yeah, that's, that's not fun. So what I love about this is I don't really clean it. You just scooch everything down when you're done and that's it. You don't have to scrub and clean it. I did reach out to Bailey, uh, but they did not get back to me. Bailey is not, they, they're doing sales right now, but they are not part of ClayshareCon. If you all want to email Bailey and say, hey, you know, ClayshareCon's happening. Jess emailed you. You didn't get back to her. They were with us last year. I just think they're really busy. And I tried getting a hold of them, but you know, that would have been good, huh? So this is just a basic cylinder. Now, let's see, what one we use? I've got a bunch of Kentucky Mud Works Dirty Girls tools here. I'm gonna 
cut away this excess that's happening down there. So I've been throwing pottery since 2000. So I've been throwing pots for 21 years. Crazy, I know. And I always have that tiny little, little bit of clay down there. No matter how many pots I make, it's just how I work. So let's talk about shaping. Let me grab another rib. I'm gonna use this Dirty Girl rib. I don't know what it is called. It's just a really great shape that I like working with. We're giving away a set of Dirty Girl tools today. So let's just pull up using the rib to scrape off that slip. We want our surface fairly dry because we are gonna be texturing it. You just got your Bailey Pro. Woohoo! They're kind of slow. I think they're overwhelmed right now, and I think that's why I didn't hear back. I, I love Bailey. I really do. And they're, I've worked with them before, and I'm sure it's not that they didn't want to be a part of it. I'm just, sh I can imagine they're crazy busy. So I'm going to press in with this rib at the bottom as I pull up slightly, and I'm creating a little inward curve. You see we got that nice little curve there? And then I'm going to accentuate that a little more with the back end of this rib. So it's almost like making a little goblet in one piece. And then this part, I'm just going to pull up. Got a little bit of a straight side happening here. If you wanted to flare it out, you could do that. Or we can go the other way and press outward and round it a little more. If your top is a little too wide, collar in. So we can collar this top. So I'm just, this is also called necking in. <laughs> when I learned it, it was called necking in. <laughs> Sounds funny, I'm, I'm necking. Ha ha ha. So we've almost made a fancy, fancy piece, but you want a side that you'll be able to add texture to. So think about how that roller or stamp is going to look on a flat surface because a curved surface, you might not be able to stamp it well. So let's see, you're looking at their slab rollers, their sale prices are amazing. So that is where I got my slab roller. I got it on sale uh, when I got mine a few years ago. Oh well, goodness, I don't know how many years ago it is now. Over 10. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. But I love my Bailey slab roller. I make a lot of big pieces. I need a lot of slabs. All right, this is basically done. The last thing I'm going to do is a little bit of an undercut down here. Just clean that edge up. This piece will need a little bit of trimming, and we'll get to that this afternoon. We're going to cut it off. And then let's see where we are for time. Let's see if I'll make us another one. We're at 10.24. Um, let's see, I am going to 11. I want to stamp these. And we have a studio tour at the end today of my broadcast. I'm going to end it a few minutes early. Janet K. Christian uh, is, did a studio tour for us, and hers is going to be today. So we're going to do that. Let's quickly throw one more. I'm pretty sure I can. See how these work? I didn't even talk about that. Wait, let me put my clay back down. So I use, sometimes they're hard to get out, so I use a little screwdriver to pull out this insert. Some of the other companies might be getting ready for Inseca. You're right. Yep, I think that's a lot of it. There was a few companies I talked to, they had Inseca coming up, um, and they just, you know, it was, it was too much for them to do. So, yeah, that's probably what they're doing. All right, so you have your insert in. I didn't mention it, but I have a, a towel here off to the side that I'm using to, to clean. You know, our lighting could be better on the side camera. I'm just noticing it now, how dark it is that that light needs to be brought in for this. We did a, I don't know if you can bring it in with the cords and everything. <laughs> All right, we're gonna smack this down again. Smack it in. Yeah, that power strip's probably in your way. And then we're in the center. 
Inseca is the National Council for the Education of Ceramic Arts. That's what Inseca is, and they do a conference every year, but last year it was canceled. This year they're doing a virtual version. Uh, I don't know how it's going to look for the conference. It's usually full of artists doing talks, lectures, historical lectures on ceramics. Museums come to it. Big ceramic galleries come and present and have pieces for sale. There's usually a big gallery expo with pottery for sale. There's a resource hall full of supplies and materials where all the vendors and a lot of the sponsors that are here on Clay Share come and they sell their, their, their products there. So you can check that out. It's nceca.net. You can register for their conference. Uh, there is a fee for, for it, but they do a lot. This is the first time they've done a virtual one. So we'll see how it looks. You know, my main thing is I, I, I do a lot of virtual stuff. I do a lot of online. So I scheduled this before I realized Nsiko was going to do one, but I think it's a, I think there's room for everybody. I mean, who doesn't want more clay awesomeness, right? Paul hopes to go someday. Well, next year, 2022, and Sika will be in Sacramento, California. And hopefully by next March, we all will be able to get together and go to that. Because that would be pretty nice. You just emailed Pottery asking about discount. <laughs> you have purchased your kiln slab roll and lots of other things from them. Yeah, Catherine. They, uh, they're a great company. I really like Bailey a lot. They were part of this last year. I just am pretty sure they're overwhelmed. There was a couple other companies that, the exact reason, they were overwhelmed. So I'm going to open this up. I'm compressing the bottom here. I'm going a bit fast, I know. I, I tend to get speedy on the wheel. I want a nice even bottom. Now we're going to pull up. I'm going to slow way down. You went to a ceramic convention before and it was really fun. I know. They are very fun. They are. I, I love the online that we can get together, but it's not the same. We know it's not the same. It's just different and it's nice to have the option, right? So I'm going to pull this up. I'm making a skinnier one, I think. This time. They should come back to Cincy. I know. You saw me at Enseca. Yay! It was an amazing week. I know. I met many of you at Enseca, right? So this next year, 2022, it'll be at Sacramento. They'll be announcing where it will be in 2023 during this year's conference. And yes, I do have a shelf liner under this Studio Pro Bat system because I want to make sure that it doesn't wobble. And I do have a, a class on making your own bat. What do I call it? Do I call it a bat pad? Gripper pad. <laughs> bat gripper, I think. I don't know. There's a, a bunch of companies that make them and sell them. So I have to be careful what I call it because I don't want to infringe on any copyrights. That would not be good, right? A lot of people are building home studios now, so wheels, kilns, et cetera, and shortage. I know. That's what I've heard from L&L kilns about um, the fact that so many people are buying kilns. So let's make this, we're going to make this fairly straight right now, but we're going to do stuff to it later. All right. This one we're just leaving like plain old, no fancy, no frills because we'll get back to it later. Cut that off. All right, let's start adding some texture. Your aunt lives outside of Sacramento. It might be a good time to see her too. I mean, just, I'm just here for the conference, auntie. <laughs> Never mind me. I'm going to stay, you know, in your guest bedroom. <laughs> All right. So I've got some pieces I made yesterday. 
try to catch up with all your comments. How do you qualify for the giveaway? Well, if you're a prime member of ClayShare, a premium member, I should say, you're automatically entered. But everybody else, you can just sign up for our emails. If you go to ClayShare.com and you scroll on down that main page, you'll see where to sign up for the emails. Just fill that form out and you're in. All right, which one are we doing first? This one. So here's one I did yesterday. And this is why I love the Space Saver system because I can just press this back down in like this. And look, it fits. It's centered. I know it's perfect every time. Sometimes when they're wet like this, it's handy to actually, I should have done that, wet the sides before you put it in. Because now it may not come out. I'm not kidding. <laughs> they, you know, that dry clay might stick in there. But we'll see. All right. So I have a great aunt that lives outside of Sacramento. So can I stay with her mom? I don't think I've ever met her. <laughs> She was my mom's dad's, she is my mom's dad's sister. So what should we do with this guy? I got some stamps. I think we're gonna save the chicken for the other one we're gonna do. I got some rollers. Um, I've got these great ones from MKM. They make this crazy tool right here. Look at that, what? And you get these to go in it. This slides on, this shuts, lines up. And then you just hold it. Your hand holds it together. It doesn't tighten or anything. And then you just wiggle it and pop it open. And these little rollers, textured rollers that they make. Um, here's a little teeny weeny one. There is a bunch of different designs. Here's another one right here. That's a fun one. I've used that one before. And so what I love about these rollers, oh, I love this one too. It's a great flower one. We're gonna do this one right here on the rim. Ready? So let me get the inside of my clay wet because my hands are gonna be in there and I want to make sure my hands can move without sticking to my clay. Now I, I threw these last night and then I covered them up really well. Like the same as if I threw them about an hour and a half ago. You want them to stiffen up a little bit, but not leather hard. It has to be soft. All right. Let's see how we're doing. Yes, this is an MKM tool. Ready? It's going to go pretty fast. Texturing goes really fast. We're going to press it in and then turn it on. And let go. So look what we just did. This beautiful little line we have right there of texture is gorgeous on this cup. Uh, can we do it down here? I think we could do a little one down there. Let me get a little one. Let's do this one. I've got this little guy. And then maybe we'll do some stamping. So you can do just stamping. You could do just the rollers. You could do um, really anything you have that you want to put texture on. So let's line this up right here. And you're going to go slow. Let me get my hands wet and do just one round with wet on that. I don't want drag. There we go. Ready? Press in and go. And then I'm going to go ahead and do another pass with my just my finger in there so I can press it outward so I don't have an inward dent like I created because I don't want to lose this beautiful shape that I've got. Look at that. Clean that there off. I think we could uh, do more. I mean, we could put maybe some stamps. I don't. You don't want to overdo it, but you know how I feel about that. You're on China Clay Art, and I'm getting you in trouble. Do you have a discount code? There is. I believe it's Clay Share. Do you know what, Kev? Is it Clay Share Ten? Are they a ten or fifteen? Or are they more? I'll grab that real quick. Kevin's gonna grab that for you all. So I'm just gonna try to get my rim back in center. Sometimes you throw it out of center when you're adding texture. You will not notice it once it's like off the wheel. But I just wanna make sure I have a really nice rim. I see folks are here from everywhere, watching from Germany, from Norway, from Long Island, another person from Germany, North Carolina, 
Uh, Clay Share 20, all caps. Thank you. Nope. Hang on. No, that's not it. There's something different. Kevin's got it. There's a different one. Hold on. All right, so that's one. Uh, I did cut it off when I threw it yesterday, but I'm just going to cut it off again. So this one's honestly dry enough. I could pick it up and sit it on a shelf and reuse this little bat insert, but we're going to... It's Clay Share Con 20. It's Clay Share Con 20. All capitals? 20% off at Sam Bao, which is China Clay Art, and the code... You want to switch to the front camera so I can show everybody up front because I think that's a better view. Uh, this is gorgeous. This is gorgeous. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Can you imagine that? And a gorgeous celadon clays. I have to trim the bottom. All this clay here will be trimmed away. But this shape's beautiful, isn't it? It's a, new, it's a newer shape. I was a little inspired by Adam Field's shapes. Uh, so I went that way with it. But you see, it did come out of the, the bat system, no problem. I didn't even think about it when I was removing it. Hello from the UK. Hi. Can we post all the codes for the sponsors? There are so many. There's too many to, for us to just post right now. You need to go to the website, claysharecon.com. And if you click on the sponsors page, you can see all the, each sponsor's code and what they're doing. Everybody's doing something different. Everybody has different... Um, discounts and stuff so that's the best way to see those codes all right push this back in yeah go to the uh, sponsors page and you'll see each of the sponsors logos listed click on that logo and it'll take you to that sponsor and you can see all of their deals promos giveaways all the everything that they're doing Kev do we have a code for MKM Let me go to the he's gonna go to the sponsor page on claysharecon.com Oh, you're doing it right now. I see. And so, 15% off all tools. Use the code MKM15 on MKM's website. All right. Go check that out. And that way you can save on that. Um, Clayscapes Pottery has some. I don't know how many, but they've got some. The ones I used again uh, just now, if you like them, I got the roller handle. And then this flower one... Um, go back to the front and I'll put these up, right, unless you're still there. You're, you're on the front. Okay, so I'm going to get up, get up out of my chair. So this roller one right here is a little like vining leaf with a flower. And then this little baby one right here, this, I love this. And then this handle you got to get too, because it just, you just let go. There's no, there's no screw or anything. It's just your hand holding it that keeps it together. And actually it kind of stays together on its own. But I, I love, the, they're called roulettes. It's fancy. It's a roulette. And you can roll them in the clay too, mind you. You don't have to do this on the wheel. You could roll it into a slab. And they make all kinds. I've got, um, I don't have that many. I need to go to MKM's site. And MKM also makes rollers, like textured rollers that are great. I like those better for slab work. Um, here's another nice one, this one right here from MKM. Now, we got this other tumbler. I want to do a stamp, and I haven't tried Debbie Dela Cruz's stamps, the De La Design. Uh, check, your, check your side. Yeah, Ooh, your okay, we'll do that. Um, that lighting is terrible. I think between this and the next throwing class, I'm going to adjust the lighting because I am not happy with it. So, I don't know, will this chicken fit? I think we can make it work. I'm going to show you how to do a stamp. So I'm going to come down a little bit. Stamp, you're just going to press it in, and you have to rock it a bit. We're going to have to rock it to this side. You're going to have to rock it back. Don't lose your place, though. Don't lift it off. I'm supporting the inside, because if not, it will crush. It's already kind of crushing our little tumbler. And now I'm going to lift it up and press down at the bottom. And let's see how he did. Ah! Oh! We got a little chicky. So I flattened it a bit. Let me smooth it out. So when you're doing stamping, you do tend to alter the shape quite a bit. Okay, we're gonna do more stamps, so I am not going to worry about fixing that. 
Um, I have some of mine in Sharon stamps. I want to try some of those because I haven't used them on a wheel thrown piece. Oh, that's a good one. That little, uh, that little flower. These are from my pin flower rolling pin. We pulled some of my favorite designs. We have a succulent in a pot, little cactus in a pot. There's another one. So these all, if you're ordering at Sharon's site, you know, a lot of people were getting things yesterday. Check out these stamps because they're super cute. Let's do one. I think we'll just do this one. Now, if you're having a problem with your stamp sticking, you can dust them with cornstarch, which I have already done with this one. And we're going to stamp this. Woo, woo, woo. Oh, will you get my MKM decorating disc, the little one? It's on my table. I need it. It's a chicken. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> <I> see Leslie. <laughs> it's a chicken. You've been able to order most of your supplies from Clayscapes, and they're applying the codes for you. Oh, good, Bonnie. Yeah. Thank you. I have an MKM decorating disc, and it's not opened. <laughs> it's sealed up. Do I have a... Here, here, here. Oh. All right. Come on. You're a man. You've got a knife. Open that for me. <laughs> your code worked. Woohoo! I'm happy for you. Oh, this is so cool. So many videos and new stuff. I know. Yay. All right. Um, so I'm going to use this a little differently than we normally use it. I'm just going to pick this line here. And this. see this yellow? It goes straight across. Basically, I'm just going to use it to get lined up exactly across from each other. So I need to put my stamp right here. Right there. So let's turn this. My wheel's like, no. Don't go backwards. Pull that off because I marked it. And we're going to go right here, supporting the inside, pressing in, right? Now I'm also going to press, I'm pressing in from the outside and pressing out from the inside to try to fill this stamp. This is a deeper one with clay. All right, let's peel it away. Oh, look how cute that is. Super cute. All right, now. I have got some Sambao Studio stamps I'm totally dying to try because I just got them. I got these three new ones. I got a butterfly, this crazy pattern, and this pattern. And so we, we're just going to do this. And I'm just going to cover the front with this one. Now you can make your own bisque stamps if you want. This is a good one because it's a uh, simple, like, look, we got texture happening. We'll do that one. I don't, I don't know about this one here. I'm going to put the butterfly with the chicken. Here we go. Butterfly is going to hang out over here with the chicken. That turned out really well. I want to use the butterfly at the base of a handle when I put my next handle on. This one right here, I mean, I'm just going to stick it in the bottom like it, the chicken laid an egg because I don't really have a plan for that one. Oh, that's a good one though. That would look really good. I'll show you all that close up in a minute. That would look really good on a piece that you just did that stamp on. All right, so now I'm going to finish this surface just by using this one stamp and pressing it in all the way around. So it's creating these dimples. So we've texturized the surface. You can make your own bisque stamps too. You don't have to buy them. Little chicky. Look at how cute. So now let's fix our shape because we kind of beat it up, right? How do you prevent warping? Well, we're going to fix it right now. I'm glad you asked. I'm using a sponge on the inside and I'm just letting the sponge ride around for a bit to get everything wet again, but not soaking wet. I squeeze the sponge out first. But you need to have it damp enough so that you can put your fingers in there without it sticking. Now some of it's going to have a bumpily, slightly less way we stamped it. But I'm going to use this red rib. Usually I'd use my other red rib, my hand building one, the number, was it the number one? for this, but it's over at my hand building station. I didn't grab it. So I'm just gently pressing outward to get some of that round shape back. I'm also doing this to change up that shape. 
So that's pretty good. Now I want to fix the rim. So I'm just going to compress that rim. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the uh, stamps with the uh, little wooden handles, who were those from? Those were Sambao. Those were China clay art. MKM makes some too. Um, MKM, has a, uh, MKM has a one like this that's a big butterfly. They also don't have any other MKMs that are little. They do make small ones. Um, this dragonfly is an MKM. So they're very similar. Let me just, sh actually, I think they have the same company making them. This is a sand bow. This is an MKM. I don't know if that's focused on it, but they're <laughs> sand bow, MKM. I do believe they probably have the same manufacturer. Um, they just send their designs in. So now I'm going to do a little old school like hand building to fix that rim. Where this is how I smooth my rims in a hand built pot, right? That looks pretty pretty round. I'm pretty back back to center with that rim. Yeah, I'm going to do a slightly sl outward turn, very slight. So you throw these pots and you let them set just a bit, not too long, because if you let them sit too long, you won't be able to stamp them and they'll crack on you. And you don't want that. Okay. Smooth the rim. Oh, that's cute. Look how cute. We got the little chicken cup. Now, I did a cup for my mom and that's the image we used for this tutorial. And it was a owl stamp. I love it. And I don't know where I put it. I was using it the other day and I left it out somewhere. So I'll have to track that down. But um, same way I just did this. Now, we will, I did wire this off when I threw it, but I just want to make sure, yep, it came off. And now we're going to set it to the side. And um, that's texturing a tumbler. That's it. You have some of the China clay art stamps and you love them. The tiger paw one for Kevin. Oh, it would be nice of me to have a tiger paw one, wouldn't it? We can, we can switch back to the front now. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to come up front and show you the texture on both of these um, so that you can see them. And then we're going to roll to a studio tour. <laughs> Turn this light this way. So here's the one with the chicken. I'm going to see how close I can get. Okay, that's very close. Chicken and all the texture around it and then that flower in the back. See, there's the flower in the back. And then I have the other one, which I did already show you guys, but we'll, we'll, take, a, we'll take a second look. That's the up, super up close. Um, look at that chicken. So you, I could have done a better job pressing the chicken in, I think. The, um, it was my first time using that stamp, and I didn't know how deeply it would cut. And then I have the little egg medallion, like, under the bottom. <laughs> so funny. I love this one, though. This is, my, this is very elegant. Um, this, this is something that I could see making a, uh, you know, you could make 10 of them and sell them so easy. They're, they're just gorgeous. So that's my favorite. I know Debbie's chicken is very cute. And she had some other cute ones too we didn't get to for this. But she's going to be on today doing a studio tour. And uh, uh, I think maybe, a is she doing a tutorial too, Kev? Is she going to have a tutorial as well, or is she just doing the studio tour? I know she's doing uh, the tour. She Did may I put... also show how to use some of, the, some of her items. Now, if you get a Studio Probat Space Saver system, I'm going to tell you right now, you never want to put it away without having the little insert back in because it could warp and not dry correctly. So I, I'm just going to put one in it so that it's not empty. And there you go. If you soak the stamps in water for about 30 seconds before using, they won't stick. Ah, Sally's doing it along with me and it works. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Fabulous. So let's see. What else? My Oribe glaze would look good with the chicken. I agree completely. I think the Oribe on the chicken, it would fill it in so nicely. The other thing you could do with uh, Debbie's designs, especially because they go in so deep and they almost make a line. I did do a, uh, what was the stamping one I did? I did a stamping, was it for texture, where we filled it in. We did slip inlay or underglaze inlay, where we stamped the surface, 
filled it with a underglaze and then scraped it back, I believe. Um, that was a tutorial I did. Kevin's going to try to find it, aren't you? No. He's like, oh, no, I wasn't. Uh, no, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It doesn't matter. It's on there. And so we did a blue um, flower design, and it's on a hand-built cup. So you can check that out. It was a hand-built cup I made and then stamped after it was made. So I didn't stamp it beforehand. But you could do the same tutorial, do that same technique to a wheel thrown pot. All right. And don't forget to add the light flux. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So I think I caught up with everything. I will be back at 11.15. We're going to throw and alter some bowls together. That's going to be fun. We're going to do a two to three pound bowl. These are like a big salad bowl or a ramen bowl or a small serving bowl. These will be perfect. But you could do the same thing with a uh, small bowl because here's one. I'm sorry I'm throwing with it so it's filthy. Um, let me clean it. This is my Oribe on top of Clayscape's Pottery Shadow Blue. That's the glaze I've got on here. This is one I stamped with a homemade stamp. And so you can see right there when it's not messy. And the glaze usually looks much better. It's blue on the entire thing and then green on top. That's what I did. But it looks like a little seashell, but it's not. I teach you how to make that stamp in my Making Abyss stamp class. That's a fast stamp. Super fast, easy stamp. So you could do stamping of a bowl, and it alters the bowl as well. All right, so we have that studio tour with Janet K. Christian coming up next. And then when I come back, we will be throwing in altering bowls together. I hope you enjoyed this. Remember, if you haven't downloaded the ClayShare app, go do that. We have hundreds of full-length classes, thousands of videos there, and you can watch all of ClayShareCon for free there. So go check that out. See you guys soon, and check out Janet K. Christian's studio in Spain. I'm Janet Christian. Welcome to my pottery studio in the gorgeous Mondeville Mountains near Valencia, Spain. We're starting outside in the paella, or outdoor cooking kitchen, that's traditional in most Valencian homes. I use it as an extension of my pottery studio. For instance, the dining table is where I use my scroll saw for cutting templates and other shapes. The covered area is where I fire all of my pieces. Let's look at it. The cooking area is where my kiln is located. We removed the cooktop shelf and my kiln fit perfectly in that space. I don't worry about clearance because this is fire brick anyway. I use the counter to the left of the kiln for loading and unloading. My studio sink is to the right and it even has hot water. This rack is where I store kiln equipment such as posts, stilts, and shelves. Now I'd like to give you a tour of my actual studio. Welcome to my studio. My studio isn't large. It measures 11 by 14, but I have literally used every square inch of space, as you'll see. I don't throw, I only hand build, so everything here is dedicated to that endeavor. Let me show you. Let's start behind the door. On the wall is my Bailey extruder. On the rack below the extruder are all of the dies and the tools I need to use it. Also on that rack are Valencian style Spanish tile examples. The metal can holds my scrap clay in water waiting for recycling. These are my baker's racks that I use to hold the pieces I'm working on. The left rack is for bisqueware glazed and unglazed. The right rack is for greenware in various stages of drying. On top of the baker's racks is various storage, including the bowls and the foam squares I use for making shapes. 
on the rest of this wall is storage for things for making texture, supporting wet pieces, and a variety of other uses. This cabinet holds all of my cookie cutters, and each cabinet is sorted by type of cutter. All little drawers hold presses, fondant molds, te more texture tools, rollers. I even have napkin rings because they have texture on them, little mats. I have silicon mats up here that I can use to roll out a whole slab of one texture. Up top are things I use for making larger shapes. Most of this is just giant PVC pipe. Here I have pieces of foam in a wide variety of shapes and sizes that I use to support pieces that are still wet. The primary focus of this wall is my Bailey slab roller. We got the long one, but we also bought a utility cart and bolted a countertop to the top to give me an extremely extended workspace. On top of that, to help seal the seam, is a Bailey slab mat that I found I didn't actually like to use with a slab roller, but it's perfect as a topper. The board here is normally not here when I'm rolling, but it's my workspace. After I've rolled a piece out on canvas, I transfer it to the board. Below the head of the slab roller, we installed some custom shelves. That's where I store my clay. It's convenient to the slab roller and out of the way. I used PVC pipe to store my canvas mats directly below my slab roller. It keeps them clean and out of the way. Also stored here are drawers with all of my lace doilies. To the right are wood and sheetrock various sizes of wearboards. The bin is where I store newspapers that I use to protect my wearboards. In the corner is a large metal shelf that I use for storing a lot more tools and supplies. On the top are jewelry findings for when I make pottery jewelry. Below that are my underglaze transfers and other various tools, then shelves with all of my rolling pins. Below that are various edge templates and forms, my underglazes, and even acrylic paints. This is my main workspace. When they closed our engineering division at Apple, they let us keep our workstations, and I love it. My work area includes the usual banding wheel, cup of slip, water, sponges. I also have some specialty items that really come in handy. For instance, the magnifying light helps me when I do work on detail pieces. The heavy gauge nichrome wire lets me make my own stilts in various shapes and sizes. The small laser level is a great way to mark pieces before carving on them. The moisture detector is much more reliable than is it cool to the touch to know if a piece is dry enough for the kiln, especially in winter. The special black and white laser printer lets me print my own transfer decals. And the small wall-mounted TV set is a great place for me to watch tutorials and videos. The printer and TV are new additions to my studio, which is why you won't see them anywhere else in this video. On top of my engineering station is the pan I use for making marble effect and the foam square that I use for pressed forms. This last wall is cabinets and shelves. It's where I store my glazes and other supplies. These were here when we looked at the house, and it's one of the reasons this is the house I wanted to buy. I sorted the glazes primarily by color, and I put sample tiles on the front of each board so that I can tell the finished fired color. This cabinet, which was my daddy's, is where I store chains and cords that I use for making pottery jewelry. This is also where I use my Dremel and my hand mixer. In this cabinet are my round forms, including my GR pottery forms, ovals, and other shapes. And in this cabinet are squares, diamonds, and other shapes. 
The last thing I want to show you are my rolling tool racks that Eric made for me. Uh, they're so convenient. They normally sit one just to my right side and one kind of semi behind me, so everything is within reach. And they're organized by type, so let's do this one first. This is my greenware rack. So on the top are all of my carving tools and shaping tools uh, as you go down, uh, and you can see they're in bathroom cups and, and little cups that I made and baskets, pencil cups, just everything. Uh, down there's my cutters, my hole cutters, toothpicks. I use the drill bits to drill holes in. My nichrome wire is there. Farther down are sanders and shapers and my uh, edge makers or my foot makers, the corn holders. Uh, these are, again, my rubber shapers and tape measures and further down, two little baskets full of various pieces of foam that I can use for shaping and holding up. And this was a set of kids' blocks that I got and these different shapes have come in really handy holding things. And the whole rack itself, if you're interested, the bottom is a little mini uh, rolling dolly flat that we got at Harbor Freight. Bolted to that is a milk crate. Eric welded the square frame for me with pins sticking up out of it. On, on top of that, we put this little wire bathroom or kitchen cart with shelves. And then I put thin plywood on each of the shelves so all my stuff doesn't just fall through the mesh. Now, if I go around to the side, I'm going to walk all the way around this thing. Uh, you can see I've got hooks everywhere. So I have towels, I have brushes, there's my rasp, um, more little foam shapes for holding things up. Um, come around here to the back. These are, I use every side of everything. Um, I have scrapers, I have more shapers, a basket full of things to clean off my slab roller. And then finally on this last side, I have uh, another towel, and that is actually a bird seed holder that has little pieces of straw in it for when I want to just make little holes and shapes, a level, um, another level, in case I need to measure two things, and then spray oils at the bottom. This is my rack for glazing, and on the top are all my brushes and everything from bathroom cups to jars to, I think that's a mustard can on the right. Uh, these are my little paint cups and palettes and holders. Farther down is sponges and chopsticks that I use actually for stirring glazes. Um, a br that brush on the right that I keep clean so I can brush crumbs off of pieces. Uh, makeup sponges that are great for detail cleaning. They're so smooth and they have little pointy edges. My wax resist and sponges for that. And then all the way on the bottom are bigger cups for when I'm pouring glazes or just need kind of a little holding pan. On the right of this one are, I've got my color wheel mounted here. And that is actually an old laptop, piece of a laptop cover that the wheel is mounted to. Um, be creative. You'll find all kinds of uses for things. A little basket of texture sponges. And that's my um, thing for making dots, pliers for opening jars that are tight, and tape measures. Another towel, you can never have too many towels in your pottery studio. A clean up little whisk broom. And then, um, I think that's all I have on the back. And then down here to the right side again. These are where I keep all of my uh, sumi brushes because they're supposed to hang and they all have hooks. So I just put push pins on the end of the little shelf board and they all hang there. And then more clean up sponges and all the little cups I can use when I want more, uh, a, a larger quantity of glaze in various little baskets and things all the way to the bottom where I even have Dixie cups. This is where my two rolling racks normally stay. They take advantage of the open floor space and all of my tools are easily at hand. Now, if you're wondering where I keep my finished pieces, since there obviously aren't any in here, I'll show you. We installed these two plastic garden sheds here outside of my studio. 
That's my studio window right there. This is where I keep all of my finished pieces. Let me show you what's inside. Each garden cabinet only came with three shelves. We added a total of six more wooden ones. Even so, these cabinets are getting really full. Thank you for letting me show you around the studio. I hope it inspired you and maybe gave you some ideas for your own. And please feel free to contact me on Facebook if you have any questions.